Though these aren't available there yet, you can get your movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures at GameStop at the link in the description down below. Pokemon, Kaiju, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Hello there, Collector Steven here, and I'm bringing you another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle review from our homeboys over at NECA. That was really corny, but you know what? A lot of the, a lot of the YouTubers are doing it these days, so I'm going to do it too. Anyway, for this review, NECA released another bombshell at SDCC 2019, and it is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Capture of Splinter set. This set is pretty awesome because it is not only going to have the movie versions of the Foot Soldiers and Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie, but it is also going to have NECA's first 7 inch scale, or at least from the sort of resurgence of NECA we've seen in the recent years, 7 inch scale splinter figure. That's right, these complement the massively popular movie Ninja Turtle figures NECA released early this year and at SDCC last year, so without any further delay, let's see whether or not this set had any issues and whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. With a lot of the SDCC figures NECA releases, they usually go out of their way to make the box look awesome. For the cartoon turtles, NECA did a nice carrying case. For the movie turtles, NECA did a little VHS box inspired display uh, 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 box for them. And for here, they continued the tradition of really upping the ante for the way the box is made. We have a nice slip cover that represents the Foot Clan here, and to be honest with you, it does look pretty neat. The only issue with it is that, uh, well, going back to their end credits Pacific Rim SDCC exclusive, which I believe was 2014, if you bought this directly from NECA during their pre-sales, they don't really know how to package their stuff well enough when it comes to things with slip covers, and some folks reported some damages, so yeah, a eh, eh, couple of issues here and there. But... Assuming everything goes well, the slipcover is nice. It has a satin finish to it, which is great. And then we do have the actual box, which has a nice display window to it, so you can see everything on the inside. The back of it features some promotional shots, a nice setup of the capture of Splinter, a little blurb from the movie in the top and the bottom of the sides. Just continue the stuff from NECA and promotional shots. Now, something to keep in mind, in this picture here of the box, you can see the cape on over to the right-hand side. This is actually not the case. That's where I just prefer to put it. The cape is actually behind Shredder in the box. And do take note of where it is once you open it for yourself. There have been some reports of the set not coming with Shredder's cape. Whew. All right, this is definitely going to be a long review, so I'm going to try to rein it in as much as possible and move as quick as I can. So first and foremost, we're going to take a look at the figures with the foot soldier. So in this set, we get two of them. They're basically going to be identical, but what's interesting enough for one of mine, there's a little teeny blotch of silver paint next to the symbol on his headband so I'm able to actually tell the two apart which I think is pretty cool but anyway yes they are going to be identical at least that's the point of them in terms of production with paint applications and sculpt so we can take a nice close look at one of them and get the feel for both of them so we're going to have obviously the details on the head which are fantastic we have the compound eye looking mesh over the um the, the eyes which is a amazing feat at such a small size and price point so good job for NECA we have all the smaller details like the silver mouth holes and the details on the bandana which look great no real issues except for some minimal paint slop on the bandana on both of them which honestly is fine at this size we are going to have some fantastic sculpt marks all throughout the figure to cover up the different parts of the body whether or not it's going to be the skin tight head mask or the rather lax clothing on this wannabe ninja warrior. We are going to have numerous folds and different flaps on the figure which are sculpted well and they also use soft goods including felt on the belt so this way we can actually store some weapons which we will be taking a look at in a minute. 
The foot soldiers obviously also do come with a form of armor with those forearm bands, and they do look great as well. Obviously, this is not going to be a $60, $70 import, so it's not going to be over the top amazing, but for the implied price point here, this looks great. The only issue that I'm going to have with it is that they uh, did paint the wrist joints on the hands, so we do have some flaky paint. But all in all, the foot soldiers are cool. If we're going to have two foot soldiers, we have to have their leader, Shredder. Shredder looks fantastic despite the fact that he is going to basically be a retool of the foot soldier utilizing the same main body sculpt and even down to the feetsy weetsies. Never thought you'd heard baby talk in a Shredder review but you just did. Anyway, for the new parts of Shredder, we are obviously going to have an entirely new head sculpt, which looks fantastic. It has a chain mail mesh for it towards the back, and we do obviously have Shredder's nice bladed cap, which is pretty intimidating. Unfortunately, some folks have reported it being a little off-centered, but um, I have not noticed it on mine, so I can't really comment on it. Shredder's obviously going to have that mask, which is pretty dang sweet, and it can obviously be removed. Once you do remove it, we have the full face of the Shredder underneath, and the detailing here is astonishing. It is nice and gory to represent that scar that Shredder does have in the movie, and unlike the quarter scale size, I have not seen a set of eyes on this Shredder that are kind of looking up, so it's good to see we have a Shredder looking dead ahead. Now with Shredder, we do have a whole bunch of parts that have razors on them, the sharp stuff, whatever you would prefer to call them, because I'm sure there's a technical name for it. So do be careful as you're moving Shredder around that you're not going to be breaking anything off. But do keep in mind, those on the shoulder pads actually feature hard plastic, and those elsewhere on the figure are going to be rather soft and a little bendable. So there is going to be at least some concerns for safety there. Overall, Shredder looks fantastic as well with minimal paint slop, and since he is rocking that glitter in the actual application of the figure, you're not going to be able to get that off. Hope you like it. Now for the truly unique figure of the set, which NECA has not yet done in their quarter scale lineup, or not done in their video game appearance, not done in their cartoon lineup yet, it is going to be the one and only Master Splinter and... This is my favorite of the entire set, to be honest with you folks. He not only looks fantastic with rather nice paint application, but his robe that he is wearing is actually pretty cool. They were able to get some soft goods, some kind of cloth, whatever it may be, whether or not it's going to be some dish rag they found next to the uh, factory in China and just decided to put like gasoline or something on it because he actually does smell very flammable. So uh, do keep that in mind. Anyway, it overall looks great. We are going to have some nice detailing on this guy to really replicate the feel of fur, which can be difficult to do in plastic format. So that is something to keep in mind. NECA really went the extra mile to make sure that that could happen. And he even has a half ear. So that's pretty cool to see that they paid attention to even the smallest details there. And yes, they did not skimp. He actually does have a fully sculpted little rat body underneath. They're not skimping out with some wireframe doohickey here. Nope, they went the full mile to make the figure and put him in a bathrobe. No, with a little bit of ribbon to tie him up because you can't have naked rats. Anyway, we do have the bandages wrapped around the legs and then we do have that very skinny butt noodle for a tail coming out of Splinter's behind. So all in all, Splinter looks awesome down to his nice little rat goat tee. Only issue is that some of them have a rather odd eye placement. So just double check that before you commit to opening it. All right, for articulation, we're going to start off with the foot soldier. And, uh, well, they're going to be pretty much the same here. What do we have? We have the head, which plugs into the neck on a ball joint. So this way we can move the head around rather nicely. We're going to be able to get these guys to look in pretty much any direction. And then the neck plugs into the body on a ball joint as well. So, yeah, basically head movement in any direction, it, it's easy peasy. We're gonna be able to get the foot soldier to look in any direction. So if you think of an action pose, congratulations. Foot soldier, at least that point of articulation, should help out with that uh, in achieving it. Then we do have the bandana here, which uh, is on a swivel, so it moves around. That will also help with swapping it out for uh, an accessory. You will see in just a couple minutes. Now for the shoulders, they plug into the body on a swivel 
so they can spin around. And then there's a hinge, so this way you can move them forward and back, up and down, whatever you would prefer there. So pretty good movement there. The only problem is that the clothing uh, here, it's sculpted in a way where the shoulders are kind of puffed out, so we can't really get a full arm raise unless you get a little creative, and even then, you can't get super duper creative with it. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Then we do have elbow hinges. We're gonna have a double hinge, but unfortunately that's gonna be about the extent of the range of movement, or is it? They plug into the bicep and into the forearm on pegs, so we do have swivels. So this way we can spin those points around as well, and we can help out the range of movement a little bit for the double elbow hinge, not much, but you see what I'm saying. For the hands, they plug in on pegs, so they will swivel around, and then they do have hinges in the direction towards the palm and the back of the hand. So unfortunately, you can't get the fist to rock in that direction. Now, do be careful, at least on the foot soldier, uh, because the arm guard can come off. So if for whatever reason, you do not want your foot soldier with an arm guard, then, uh, well, you can do that. Anyway, continuing on, we do have a waist joint, which is a ball joint. Feels like a double axis or a barbell style, so you can twist and turn your foot soldier around to your heart's content. We do have swivels and hinges in the hips. Foot soldier is going to be going out about that far in terms of a split. And then about that far back, thanks to a very um, voluptuous booty and that far forward. So that's pretty neat. We do have thigh swivels where the hips plug in, so that's pretty cool. Now for the knees, don't really like these joints. Why? Well, double hinge. So the first hinge at the top works rather well. The second hinge down here on my other foot soldier, eh, easy to move. Shredder, just fine. Here, uh, I'm going to break it. Yeah. So, it, yeah, my buddy Ultrazilla, talking to him. Uh, his just became super loose over time, so you just got to be careful with it. Then we do actually have hinges and swivels for the ankle, so we get full-on ankle rocker movement, which is great. So yeah, overall, the foot soldier is pretty dang sweet. Now, notice that I said when we were talking about the articulation here for this uh, knee joint, I talked about shredder. Well, guess what? Shredder is going to be using, like I mentioned, the same body as the foot soldier, down to even the different folds in the clothing. So here's a look at that articulation that actually works here on Shredder. Yay, that's pretty cool. So yeah, all the points of articulation are going to be the same here on Shredder, even down to the awesome neck joints and where the head is plugged in. So yeah, even the fact that he has a helmet and this chain mail and whatnot, it's not really going to block the articulation much. Just keep in mind, you are going to have all of these razor sharp spiky thingies on him. So uh, be careful on that. That one, you're not ripping anything off or you're hurting yourself. And then on mine, there's a little bit of an issue where this portion of the right elbow hinge is very loose and it feels like it's going to shred. <laughs> shred off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, for the both of them, since they share the exact same articulation, it is pretty good overall. Just wish that the knee hinges were a little better. And now we're going to finish off the articulation with Mr. Splinter here. And as you can see from before, he has a fully sculpted body under there, so fully articulated as well. And you will actually be surprised with the quality. So the head plugs into the neck, obviously, on a ball joint. And Splinter can look around in a whole bunch of different directions. Now, there are a couple of other ball joints here in the neck systems. This way, we can get him to look down about that far. and eh, Not so much, but he can also look straight up in the air. And that is pretty dang cool, if you ask. I mean, lots of points of articulation there. And it also is nice that he has a little bit of an ab crunch system and waist joint going on here. So we can kind of see a little bit more down there. I don't want to undo the ribbon. But yes, we have another ball joint that allows for even more movement. So yes, pretty good movement there. For the arms, we are going to have swivels for the shoulder so we can spin them around. And hinges as well so we can raise and lower his arm. We do have hinges at the elbow, so we can raise his, or stretch his arm out, and swivels as well, so that's nice. For the wrists, we are going to have hinges, and the hands can also spin around. So that's pretty cool. Good range of movement there. For the legs, we are going to have standard sort of NECA style with a swivel, so we can spin the legs out about that far, back about that far, Hinge out to the side. Why, yes, indeed. 
Can Splinter do the splits? Yes. Uh, well, joints are a little stiff on mine, but yeah, you can do about that far. We do have the usual thigh swivel. We have a single hinge knee that also has a swivel. Then down here, we have a cut in the leg for another hinge and a swivel. That's a little tight. Then we have a hinge at the, uh, the toe hinge. So would that be the ankle and this is a toe hinge? I don't know, but you can definitely see what's going on there. So pretty nice movement down there in the legs. Then for the tail, this is a little confusing. You can see where it plugs into the body and there's absolutely no bendy wire at this portion at all. Or if there is, it, it's broken and it sucks. But once we get down here, then we have a little bit of a bendy wire, right? And then it stops here at the tip. So the tail's kinda eh, doesn't really help too much. But yeah, splinter articulation is pretty solid for an elderly rat gentleman. So if you can think of a pose, chances are you're gonna be able to get this guy in it. Thumbs up. All right, so like many of NECA's other TMNT sets, there are a ton of accessories. So let's go ahead and fly through this as fast as I can in the same order we've sort of been following. So we're going to talk about the foot soldiers up first. So we do get a general weapons rack. So this way we can store all of the weapons for all of the characters that we get here. Yay. Now with this weapons rack, we obviously are going to have our weapons and we are going to get two sets of nunchuck. Nunchucku, I don't know. I don't know what the technicality is. Sue me. We're going to have one that has sort of a barbed handle and a metal chain to it. And then another set that's going to just be black plastic with a bendy wire to it. Not a big fan of this one, but it is what it is. We are going to have a sword. We are going to have a black pole. We are going to have an axe. We are going to have two sai. We're going to have a baton. We are also going to have Shredder's famous his spear, whatever you would prefer to call it. And then we are going to have Shredder's dagger, which we'll be taking a closer look at Shredder's equipment in just a little bit. Right now, we're talking about the feet soldiers. The foot soldiers? Yeah. Anyway, for the foot soldiers, we are also going to have two sets of hands, one set of splayed hands and then one set of weapon holding hands. That's right. For two foot soldiers, we are going to have to share a set of weapon holding hands. So if you want one foot soldier to wield the axe and the other one to hold the sword, they are going to have to share a left open hand and a right open hand. Yep. They didn't double up on hands for this. Don't know why they did it, but they did it. At least for this part, the weapons do look cool with only minimal paint issues with the handle for the axe. Otherwise, everything is looking pretty dang sweet. We do also get an alternate bandana piece for the foot soldiers. So this way, if you want the bandana to sway in another direction and not have it look a little off, you can do that. Now for Shredder, like I made mention, we do get some accessories for him. We are going to get that pike, that spear, that whatever you would prefer to call it, polearm, I don't know. And we are also going to have his mysterious dagger, his knife, whatever it is, that may be hidden in his belt on his back when he goes to throw that at Splinter at the end of the movie. That is rather sweet that they included a detail of that magnitude. Now for a note, Shredder also comes with a set of splayed hands and a set of weapon holding hands. Do take note though on my splayed hand, the left hand that has the razors on it, one of them popped off. A little bit of super glue popped it back in, no issue. Now Shredder is also going to come with his cape. His cape is actually pretty cool. It has a nice zebra print to it. It's very shiny because it's metallic and it is actually made out of soft goods. It is using a clasp at the neck or the throat rather. So do keep in mind, it may come undone as you're posing Shredder doing this, that, and the other. But something else to keep in mind, it does have a small bendy wire on the left and right hand side. So this way you can get a little bit of posing out of it on its own and you don't have to put Shredder in some super duper Superman pose to get it to float and flutter. Unfortunately on mine, it's already beginning to tatter just a couple of weeks after opening it up out of the box. Not cool. 
Now we're going to have Splinter's accessories, and unfortunately, Splinter is rather short on supply <laughs> with those accessories. We are going to come with a set of handcuffs, uh, restraints, I don't know what you would prefer to call those, and those snap around his wrists with a nice actual metal chain to it. Now, the way that this works is that the chain is a completely separate piece, and it doesn't actually stick in to the different cuffs. So the way that it works is that the cuffs are held together by a little peg, and then you just fish the chain through the peg as they close up so you can kind of see as i'm explaining here hope hopefully it, it makes sense yeah and then we do get the wooden crate that splinter is going to be standing on yay that is so cool now it does have NECA and 330 1990 on it not quite sure what 330 1990 on it means i mean i don't know maybe that was a release date of some some movie about some Ninja Turtles or something or the I don't know. Anyway, probably not important. But that is what you're going to have Splinter stand on. <sighs> okay, so that was pretty much the long and the short of it for the accessories. I hope I covered everything well enough, and I explained everything well enough in pictures. So as you can see here, if you want to create a nice display for your capture of Splinter set just on its own, you can, and you won't necessarily need your Ninja Turtles for it. However, there are a few critiques to obviously have here. First and foremost, like I made mention, for the foot soldiers, the feet soldiers, whatever, you are going to be sharing the extra hands and there's no backup set. That means I'm probably going to have to get at least one or two foot soldiers as they're individually released at GameStop, so this way I have extra weapon holding hands because, come on, come on, come on. Then on top of it, though you can balance Splinter on the crate, it isn't really a good stabilized hold because he probably will fall over if you have him set up on a shelf or if you have him set up in an Ikea Detolve cabinet. Yeah, a little bit of a ricky, rickety shake and he's going to topple over. So if you need a Tamashi Stage Act 4 support stand or something like that, I definitely recommend that here. So yeah, overall though, for everything that we get, this is a rather nice setup. Just need some support stands and some extra hands. Now we're going to go ahead and round out the review with a size comparison with some other figures you just might have, including some other types of turtles that may be in your collection. So as you can see here, these three unique, anyway, figures in the box do scale well with your NECA figures you already have. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Splinter is rather awesome as he is going to be the one truly unique NECA TMNT product in this set, while everything else is simply just gravy. Now, when it comes to buying the actual set on the aftermarket, mm, tough to say. When it came to last year's SDCC exclusive, they reissued everything at GameStop minus, I believe it was just the full pizza and the pizza box. So here, they're going to probably reissue everything, as not confirmed by Randy, at GameStop, minus a couple of accessories. But which? Is it going to be the weapons rack and the crate for Splinter? Or what else? Hmm. Yeah. If you are on the fence right now and you're thinking about getting the GameStop stuff... I would probably lean towards hoping the GameStop releases are going to be good and maybe not picking this one up just yet. But it never hurts to have this one now waiting for GameStop to get theirs in and then deciding if the extra accessories are really worth it. Because who knows, maybe this one shoots up on the aftermarket. All in all, though, some issues aside, I really dig this set. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand-selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand-selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.